Welcome back in another Latilities tutorial. Today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make this. In the previous video, I promised to show you how to use color dodge on another level, and this is what I have promised. Without any further ado, just jump to Adobe Illustrator. Remember to set color mode to RGB first, like I said in the previous video, because this color dodge works well in RGB mode. Actually, you can just use CMYK, but the end result will be different from what I'm going to do here. In this video, I no longer need to explain how color dodge works. If you don't know about it, then you can just click the link above, or in the description. All you need to know is that the final result depends on the background color you made. And the important thing is never to use solid black, because this color dodge will not work at all. First, make the base color. I'm gonna make the background as base color in three colors. I've created a color palette over here, so if you want to use it, just copy it in the description. To make the background, or base color in three color, we just need to apply gradient color to it. But first, make the rectangle using rectangle tool. Remove the line, because we don't need it. Just select the stroke box on the toolbar, and click the none button below it, or press the slash on the keyboard to get rid of it. And reactivate the fill color by clicking the fill box, or you can switch from stroke to fill box by pressing X on the keyboard. To apply a gradient color, you only need to open the gradient in the collapsed panel. Or you can open it in the window menu, and look for gradient. By default, the gradient panel only gives a black to white gradient. But we need these three colors to add to the gradient slider, or gradient annotator over here. Now, all we need to do is change the color of the two existing, color stops, and add one more color stop in between. To do this, you just have to choose one of the color stops you want to change. And pick the color picker over here, to pick a color from the palette that was created. Here, we've changed the color. Do the same for the other color stop. Because the color picker is already active, so you just have to choose the color from the palette. Finally, add a color stop between these two color stops. Point your cursor under the gradient annotator, or gradient slider, parallel to these two color stops, until, plus sign, appears on the cursor. Click on it, and just pick a third color in the palette. And to make sure the position of this color stop as I expected, I changed the location to 50%. I think the background is perfect, even though at first glance, it's just a flat black color, but you will be amazed. The base color is done, now we are going to make the neon. I suggest to create a new layer on the layer panel to place our next work, and lock the existing layer, so that we can work freely without having to touch the background. For neon that I want to create this time, is different from the neon I showed in the previous video. In the previous video, I just made a very simple straight neon, using two techniques. The first, is purely using only gradient color, and the second is using the blend tool to create a black and white gradient. And unfortunately we can't create curvy neon like this, just by using a gradient. Because basically, I've used a gradient, just to show you how it works which basically requires a color transition from white to black to create a light impression. So, to create a neon effect like this, we have to use the second method by using the blend tool, to make a gradient from white to black. Now, let's create the neon. For the first neon that I'm going to create, is circular neon. Use ellipse tool, and place the cursor in the middle of the artboard, and let the smart guides guide you until you find a point in the middle of the artboard. Just click and drag to draw a circle. Press Shift key on the keyboard to create a perfect circle. And press the Alt key at the same time to make the center of the circle at the starting point we place the cursor. Set the stroke to 12 point, and remove the fill. The higher the stroke you make, the thicker the neon effect will be. Go to the object menu, and open the expand panel. Uncheck the fill, cause we don't need the fill. After our line circle turns into a path, go to menu object again. Path. And click the offset path. Set the offset to 120 pixel, then just click the OK button. Now, we have two bold circles. Because these two circles are in the same group, it would be better if we separated them for convenience. Right click, and ungroup to separate them. For the thinner circle, we give white. 
and the thicker circle, we give black. Now, we are going to blend them using the blend tool, on the toolbar. Select the thinner one, then the thicker to blend them. As you can see, that the result of a gradient using the blend tool, is the same as a gradient using the gradient tool. The difference is, we can make it into any shape, but it depends on the basic shape of the path that you make. And the last step, you just need to change the blend mode from normal to color dodge, to get that neon effect. Now, we got the circular neon effect. For the final touch, I'll add a light reflection to the floor. Still the on same way. Create a circle, but this time without a stroke. For the fill, fill it with the default gradient in the swatches. Change the type to radial. And go back to the gradient panel to modify it a bit. Don't use pure white on this white color stop. This will give the impression of being a light source, rather than reflected light. I'll show you what I mean. But first, change the blending mode to color dodge first. Edit the circle into a long ellipse. Okay, if I give it a pure white, it will give the impression of a new light source underneath. Not the light reflected on the floor. Because color dodge will give contrast to the white. Whereas if we give it the color gray, light gray, it will give the impression of light reflection. Now, we are done for this circular neon. Now we have got a realistic neon effect. Finally, if you want to change the neon color, you can try changing the background. Now it's time for you to try it. You can also experiment with other shapes using this technique. This technique can work on several shapes as I show here, as long as it is a geometric shape. For several shapes, such as free shapes, text, wavy lines, and several other shapes. We can't use this technique because it doesn't work perfectly. But we can still make it happen by using other techniques. For example to make neon text like this. I'll show you how, in the next episode. So don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and turn on notifications, for upcoming videos.